Good morning, everyone. I uh, just wanted to uh, say hi and also to reassure you all that all is right in the world. Everything is okay. I'm wearing my black t-shirt again. So now it's, it's, it's normal. I know this year has been so uneventful that me wearing a different color t-shirt was what really truly shocked you and threw you off this year, but it's okay. We're back to normal. And uh, to kind of keep with the tradition, I kind of want to talk about Matthew again. Uh, we did that last week, talking about Matthew 18 with the whole um, how to resolve conflict thing. And uh, Jesus kind of continues the theme in Matthew 18 again. Um, it's apparently a different time because this is a time where Peter comes to Jesus and asks a question, right? And Peter asks a question that probably all of us have thought at some point in time. He comes to Jesus and he says, okay, Lord, um, another member of the church sins against me. How often should I forgive him? I mean, I'm willing to go as high as seven times. Seven times is good, right? And I, I'm going to actually stop right there. <laughs> because have you ever had someone need to come to you and ask forgiveness seven times in a row? And if that's ever if that's ever happened to you, um, how did, how did you feel about that? Was that something where you felt like seven was a reasonable number of times for someone to come and ask forgiveness? Or or was it that you kind of assumed at that point that this person was just kind of an awful human being? Right? Like if somebody comes to you and says, hey, you know, um, I'm really sorry, but I know we had that, that thing scheduled for today, but I have to bail. And so you reschedule. And then they come to you on like the, the day of the rescheduled event. Oh, hey, you know, I'm really sorry, but... I've got a bail. I had something else come up. Oh, okay, no worries. Well, third time's the charm. We'll try it a third time. Well, I don't know. I had something come up. I'm sorry, but I, I've, I've got to cancel. And if they do that to you seven times, you, in real life, you've probably stopped rescheduling with this person somewhere around three or four, <laughs> right? Um, and so maybe that's a bad example because maybe that's not like an outright, like, they didn't like sin and canceling on you. It was just kind of annoying, right? But even if it's not a big, huge, terrible deal, someone canceling on you and being annoying like four times in a row is probably enough to make you quit. So Peter is probably thinking, you know, I'm setting the bar kind of high here. Let's go ahead and let's forgive people seven times. And Jesus comes back with, well, not seven times, Peter. And he's going, oh, good, man, it's not seven. We're off the hook. And then Jesus says, it's 77 times. And Peter goes, well, hold up. <laughs> Wait a minute, Jesus. And Jesus is like, all right, Peter, it's okay. I got a story. And so Peter sits down. He maybe settles in a bit. And Jesus tells him this story about a, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, maybe compared to a king who just wants to settle accounts with everyone, right? And so he begins the reckoning, and he realizes there's this guy who owes him 10 thousand talents now a talent is a fairly large unit of weight i don't remember exactly how much but it's i think it's a little more than a pound if this dude owes ten thousand pounds of silver let alone ten thousand pounds of gold this dude is in some serious debt like this guy took out a loan bought a small village and then just like bulldozed the whole thing like this guy has really screwed up right? And so he can't pay it back. And so the king's like, okay, look, this is what's going to happen. We're going to sell everything you own, including you, your wife, and your children. And we're going to sell all of you into slavery because you really screwed up. And that will be the beginning of you paying me back because that's how much you owe me. And so he, he, the, the guy falls on his knees. He's like, please have patience on me. I, I will pay you back everything. He's, prom he's, he's basically making a promise he probably can't keep. And I think the king probably knows that. And so the king takes pity on him and says, I'm going to release you. I'm going to forgive the debt. Like, I'm not even going to take everything you own. I'm going to let you keep it. Yeah, I'm going to forgive the debt. And so what does this guy do, right? He leaves. And he's probably super happy. He's relieved. He's, man, he is. That's a weight. That's a weight taken off. And so he goes out. And he finds this other dude who owes him 100 denarii, which is like 100 days wages, basically. 
So you figure that's about a third of a year median income in our town is like, I don't know, what, forty, forty-five thousand $45,000 probably for a household. Um, so you figure a third of a year, a little less than a third of a year is probably like 10 grand, maybe 15 grand. Um, so a good chunk of money, but not the like, I just bought a city kind of money, right? Like it's, it's a much, much, much smaller amount of money. And so he seizes this guy by the throat and it's like, pay me what you owe. And so the same story happens. The guy falls down. He said, pleaded with him, have patience on me. I will pay you. But then the first guy who had already had a huge debt forgiven said, no, I don't have any pity for you. And threw the guy in prison until he could repay. And so everyone else looking on is like, hey, this is a guy who just had a huge debt forgiven. And then he refuses to do it for someone else. That's a low move. That is awful. This guy's kind of a dirtbag. We're going to go tell the king. So they went, they reported to their lord all that had taken place. And then he summoned him and says, look, you wicked slave. I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. You should have had mercy on someone else. And his anger, he handed the guy over to be tortured until he paid his whole debt. And so at the end of this story, Jesus looks at Peter and says, so my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from the heart. <laughs> hmm. Okay, Jesus. So 77 times? 77? Okay. Yeah, I'm just basically going to forgive people every time. <laughs> if that's okay with you. Because I'm, I'm not interested in the thrown into prison forever and tortured. Um, but here's, here's the deal. Forgiveness is a funny thing. Because a lot of times, you know, like the, the phrase you've probably heard, you know, forgive and forget. You know, the idea that if somebody... Um, is repentant, you forgive, you forget, you move on. I don't think that Jesus is talking about forgiving and forgetting here. Especially in the instance where there are people who have taken advantage of others. And unfortunately, according to statistics, there's probably somebody who's going to watch this video who has either experienced some sort of abuse themselves or knows someone who has and so the danger of this particular teaching is that if i didn't qualify it at least a little bit um it could be interpreted as saying you need to forgive someone who's abusing you 77 times and pretend like it's okay every time they apologize i think that god would smile upon someone who says i forgive you from way the heck over there. I am going to get away. I'm going to get far enough away that you can't hurt me. I'm going to put some boundaries in place and you and I are going to be separate. And I forgive you. And so that's that's tricky, right? And so I think that forgiveness, the way Jesus talks about it, is releasing someone from the debt to you. Right. And so if someone has hurt you, you can feel entitled maybe to vengeance. You can feel entitled to making them make it right. Right. And so you, you feel like they have a, a debt that they owe you to make right what they had broken. And in a very real sense, they they do. Um, people have an obligation to make things right. And so forgiveness then is choosing to, you know, maybe accept restitution if it's offered later, but to choose to be willing to let go of the relationship and let go of that debt and to walk away. And sometimes forgiveness, if the other person is willing, can also lead to a restoration of relationship, right? And so if both people, say, are, are godly people, and both people are willing to work on it and to make things right. The person who's aggrieved, the person who is wronged, can forgive and be willing to walk away without, you know, collecting on the debt or collecting vengeance. And the person who has done wrong then should also be pursuing restitution, should be pursuing, you know, making things right 
so that so that the relationship can be restored and that that would be ideal right but it would take the work and the willingness of both people to make that happen you know uh, there's a bible verse that says so long as it depends on you live at peace with all people and so even in scripture there's an acknowledgement that living at peace with people is not entirely up to you sometimes there are people who will always be people of violence and so long as it depends on you, live at peace with them. And sometimes living at peace with them requires distance, requires boundaries, requires barriers between you and them. Because if you allow them in, there will be violence. And so you need to keep them out. And so the wisdom then in that case is knowing which situation is which. Which relationships, which people are willing to be brought back and brought in. And which people are are more likely to continue to be hurtful. And I don't think that's something where you can even necessarily trust your own judgment. I think that's something where you need to ask for God and ask for the Holy Spirit to give you the wisdom to know the difference. And so the questions then, the questions we can kind of ask ourselves, then is there is there anyone or anything that you need to ask forgiveness of? Have you, have you hurt someone? Are you, are you the aggressor? Are you the person who's done harm, who's done wrong? And if so, it's time to pray and ask God, what, what do I need to do to make this right? And the other, the other thing we need to ask is, we need to acknowledge, is there anyone that we've refused to forgive? Because sometimes you do what you need to do to get your distance, to get your safety, to get away. But if you do that without forgiving, without releasing the other person from their debt, without releasing the other person from your, your desire maybe for vengeance, if you get the distance without forgiveness, without forgiving them, that's going to eat you alive. There's a very real chance, there's a very big chance that there's going to be bitterness there that's going to hurt you. And it's going to keep you from being the compassionate person that God wants you to be. And again, that doesn't mean rec reconciliation. But it does mean you release them from the debt. And that's going, to be, that's going to be a hard work. That's not a decision of one day. That might be the work of a couple of years. And that's okay. And so I think those are the, the, the two halves here of forgiveness and for the, the idea of forgiving a debt is instead of locking people into demanding what you owe or demanding restitution or demanding vengeance, sometimes we need to acknowledge that we're the person who owes restitution. Sometimes we're the person who maybe deserves to be the victim of vengeance if we've done wrong. And we need to seek forgiveness of someone. And sometimes we're the person who we need to walk away from that eye for an eye vengeance kind of way of thinking. We need to release the people who have done us wrong from that kind of vengeance. And we need to be willing to, to find peace in that, to find peace in walking away and releasing them. And so I, I hope that as divisive as our culture is getting, because it's getting very divisive, um, I hope that we as Christians can become known for people of being people of forgiveness people who are quick to ask for forgiveness for ourselves, but also people who are quick to forgive those who have done us wrong and to be people who live reliant on God and not reliant on getting what we're due. It's a tough teaching. It takes a lot of prayer, but it's, it's work worth doing.